What's up everyone and welcome to the Draft Dynasty channel. Today we've got a scouting report on Mr. Roni Irvonen. But before we start, I just want to say a quick thank you to all the new subscribers. I've got a bunch of new uh, subscribers lately and uh, I'm gonna be honest, I was not expecting to have so many subscribers. Uh, I do the video just for fun, but it's uh, very nice to have uh, good positive feedback. Overall, the hockey community is great. And again, just a thank you to everyone for putting your trust in me and we're gonna get ready for the draft together. With all that said, let's Let's get back to our friend Roni Irvanen. So he is pretty small, 5 foot 9, 163 pounds, so pretty short and pretty small physically. Uh, let's take a look at his stat. One thing I want to say last year, he absolutely crushed the junior SM Liga in Finland. 55 points for a draft minus one. It's pretty solid and this year he played 52 game in the Liga pretty impressive for a young player uh, 18 years old playing all season long with men's uh, and he had five goal 11 assists for 16 point one thing that I want to say though is he played maybe much more than other rookie player in the Liga sometime rookie player gonna play third or fourth line minute for him he played on the top two lines so uh, he had a lot of ice time he also played on the power play if we take into account all the opportunities he was given and uh, the fact that he was playing on the power play and also with the two best player of the team uh, i think his stats are a little bit less impressive than uh, you might think as always we're going to take a look how he's doing versus other forward from the liga so draft eligible minimum 20 game the last 20 year i already ranked them by point per game and he is uh, right here number 19 so if we look around him you have a lot of good player kasper kapanen kupari ints Sebastian Aero, Tere Vainen, Miko Rentanen. So of course it's looking really good right now. The thing is, like I said earlier, I'm not sure if all those players really had the same opportunities that he got. But still, he is in a nice company. All right, let's get the party started. And uh, you're going to be looking at number 22 whenever he's in the Liga. And he's going to have number 12 when he's in international play. As usual, let's start about the thing I like the most about his game. And for him, this is, the, I think, the only category that he is elite at. And it's going to be his stick handling so his puck control stick handling you could also add his agility in there because a lot of the time it is going to change direction really quickly and this with the combination of his stick handling help him to beat guy one on one other than that he's got some pretty nice creativity with his move so he's able to pull some harder stuff that you're rarely going to see uh, usually it's more the elite player that are going to be able to pull out those type of moves but I've seen a few really tough uh, moves that he was able to pull at high speed a few jaw dropping uh, stick handling move Ditch. he won a u18 world junior gold last year with sweden he was part of that team that won and there you go as i talk about it he lets one in and this clip here is what I had in mind when I said he was able to beat guy just by changing direction a lot of the best stick handler are good to beat guy just with their shoulder movement they are hard to predict and they're gonna beat guy just with little hesitation I've got one more example here and you're gonna see it's nothing super impressive but the end result is he beat two guy on the board just with his little hesitation and he's gonna have to rely on that because he's not super strong physically he's undersized so to get in high danger area he's gonna need to rely on his stick handling Time to move to the second thing I like the most about his game. And for this one, I was really surprised. I did not saw that coming, for especially for a small guy like him. But he was very effective around the net. So I'm going to go with the front net presence. And for that category, I'm going to include a few things. So the first one is pretty obvious, is the net uh, screening the goalie. So the front presence, basically just screening the goalie. After that, I'm going to include rebound around the net and just finishing up your plays uh, to the net. And you will notice that all of the goals that he scored this year are really close to the net within one meter of the goalie really close and of course the sample is not that big because he only scored five goals at pro level and a few other in international tournament but all in all most of his production came really close to the net and it's because he was really good at finding open spot getting open just navigating the front of the net <laughs> Atte Mäkinen rynnistää väkisin Hirvonen kiekolle. Roni Hirvonen ajaa maalin eteen röyhkeästi ja kiekko on maali 
Ja tuota MM Leiri ryhmän paikkaa. Ja sitten nähdään vielä uudestaan Hirvonen ajaa kyllä röyhkeästi sinne maalle. This one I thought was pretty funny. Just look at our art is tapping on the ice. He wants the puck and he got the goal. But yeah, it's pretty crazy how many goals he got from really, really close. I cannot remember any other prospect in this draft that got almost all their goal really close like that. So far it's been all rainbows and sunshine for him. But I'm about to drop the hammer and be the party pooper here. Uh, there's quite a few things I don't like about his game. And every time I thought I say something negative about a player and, and there's a player I don't like. Uh, those are always the, the video I get the most dislike. So I'm always scared. Be gentle with me. I cannot uh, like all the player in the draft. I'm gonna start with the thing I like the least about his game. And for him, it's his skating. And as you probably know, it's a pretty important thing about hockey. So uh, I'm gonna go a bit more in detail and explain really what the specific thing I don't like about his skating. The first thing I'm gonna say with his skating is that it's not easy for him to skate. Uh, there's uh, some player that when you watch them skate, it's effortless. They're super smooth with him right away you, you see that there's something wrong with his stride uh, this is the first thing after that other thing that I don't like he doesn't have a lot of power in his stride whenever he push uh, his legs I don't think they're uh, up there they're, they're not strong enough and after that on top of that he doesn't have the explosion as well to go with it so he doesn't have like the explosion the top speed so all in all there's a lot to work I think uh, with his skating before we start looking a little bit more in depth and we look in more closely, I just want to say that I'm nowhere near a skating expert. I was a terrible skater myself back in the days, but I did a lot of power skating at school, so I know a thing or two about skating. For the next clips, just look at his upper body. So don't look at his leg, but just look at how much he's swinging from left to right, left to right. And this is something I'm pretty sure it's not okay. He's going to need to fix that. It might be easier to fix than other problem, but uh, I don't think he should be swinging from left to right. Also notice how he has two hands, always two hands on his stick and there's two school of thought for that but personally I think sometime when the puck is not near you, you should skate with only one hand on your stick and especially for him since his stick is always in the air, it's useless to skate with two hands on your stick. And this is the last thing I'm gonna say about his skating because I don't want to turn this into a skating video but his stride is pretty short so whenever you have a guy with a short stride usually it means it could be either that he's not flexible enough or whenever he push he doesn't bring back his leg enough. So whenever you push, you always need to bring back your leg kind of close toward the center of your body. And with him, I don't think he's bringing his leg enough toward the center of the body. There's also a problem of power. I don't think his legs are strong enough, like I said earlier. And acceleration, I'm not sure if he has the twitch muscle really to be super quick and have the other gear. One last stat before we finish the skating part. In the Liga, they're tracking the speed of the player. And with him, he is at 34.88 kilometers per hour. And this would rank below average. I think the average is around around 36.5 the iris would be around 39 and 40 kilometer per, per hour so this kind of match uh, what i'm seeing with my eyes one other reason why i'm not quite as high on him is that i'm not sure he's going to be able to play center in the nhl so right now he played center in the liga and a little bit of left wing and he played much better whenever he was at center i think he's a natural center all his life but when he was playing on left wing uh, there's time where he really struggled in his zone the positioning was not as good but the real question is is how many center are currently playing in the NHL let's say in the top six that are below five foot nine average skater and maybe weakish physically uh, the, the answer is not a lot there's not a lot of center right now for that reason I'm a little bit skeptical on him and I think he might not be strong enough to play center in the NHL if that's the case his value is gonna drop significantly because playing the wing is a lot less valuable Anyways, it's very possible that I'm wrong. It wouldn't be the first time not, and certainly not the last. But here are a few examples of what I'm saying, the bad positioning in his zone. A lot of the time he's getting tunnel vision watching the puck and there's a lot of players that are slipping right behind him, kind of in the back door and he's not able, he doesn't see them. Now for my NHL player comparison, since I'm not super high on him, uh, it's not going to be a big name here that I'm going to compare him with. So I've choose Brendan Leipzig, a pretty skilled player, pretty underrated player, but still more of a fourth liner that can still play on the power play kind of a player. But still, I do think he's going to produce in the Liga down the line. Uh, one other thing I want to mention, since he played all year in the Liga, I think most people are going to think that he's close to playing in the NHL. And I don't think it's the case with him. I think he's at least two or three years away from uh, being close to the NHL still a lot of things that he need to improve before uh, having a shot to play here 
Let's transition to a different category and one more time I think this is something that is gonna need to improve. We've seen earlier all of the goals that he scored are, were from really close and there's a reason why it's because his shot is really lacking the power. He doesn't have the power behind his shot really to beat professional goalie so that's why uh, he, didn't, he was not able to score any goal really from a distance this year and it's gonna be a problem. One thing that I would like to add about his shot is that it was pretty accurate. He was placing his shot fairly well. The thing is, it was really lacking the power and also the release could be much quicker. And finally, the last thing that he need to improve, and I'm gonna go quickly, I kind of uh, already touched that point er earlier in the video, but you can imagine a guy that is pretty small, not super quick, uh, playing versus man, he's kind of an easy target to pin against the board, so physically, uh, they were able to contain him pretty easily, because he didn't have the speed to burn the defenseman, so a lot of the time, he was an easy target. So physicality, clearly, he needs to get stronger, and I think it's gonna solve uh, quite a lot of the problem that I mentioned earlier, the shot maybe the skating one thing that I was impressed though I'm, I'm gonna give him that even though he was maybe undersized physically lacking strength he still had good character and he was fighting pretty hard so he's not a guy that's gonna back down easily uh, he still went in the traffic in a dirty area so he was not playing scared uh, even though he was undersized all right so that was all for the negative stuff uh, now that this is out of the way I still have a few good things that I want to talk about that I left uh, for the end and I swear if this guy turned out to be a superstar uh, I might have to delete this video because I'm, uh, I'm gonna look real bad in the future if he become a, a super elite player. I mean even last year I made a pretty big mistake with uh, Matthias Maselli, Makeli, I don't know how you pronounce his name but he's a guy from Finland that crushed it at the world junior. He was flying around the ice skating like the wind and when I look at him last year I, I didn't think he was skating that fast so things can change really quick with those players so it's always hard to project them. Like I said earlier if there's one thing that's guaranteed with the draft is that you're gonna make mistake uh, I think Masseli I had him 82 last year and right now he look like a for sure like a first round pick the way he was playing at a world junior I'm not sure if you noticed but I've saved some of the best category for last so his vision playmaking ability is very good I'm not sure it's elite but I would say for sure above average so it's very good vision he's a good playmaker and overall he's got good hockey IQ I would say uh, his decision making is good and de even defensively I saw him made a lot of good plays so uh, overall a good IQ player if I had to describe him I would say the best is his hands uh, also agility I said the skating was bad but the agility part of the skating is good and uh, both his vision and his hockey IQ are the best part about him this is gonna be it for this one as always please drop a like or subscribe if you're not already if you like the video I've been grinding hard lately almost putting all of my free time into those video for the next one the people have voted and it's gonna be the top 10 best skater in the draft it was really close with stick handler uh, and the video after that I'm gonna let you vote one more time so it's gonna be the battle of defensemen from the QMGHL. So go ahead and make your pick in the comment section. It's gonna be either Justin Byron, Lucas Cormier or Jérémy Poirier. See you on the next episode. I'm out.